The Sun Wheel of Konark, a time puzzle. The air at the Konark Sun Temple hummed with an energy that was part ancient mystery and part modern day excitement. Ritu breathed it in, her heart thumping in time with the drums of a distant cultural performance. Beside her, her brother Kabir pushed his glasses up his nose, his gaze fixed on the colossal stone structure before them. The temple wasn't just a building, it was a story carved in stone, a gigantic chariot for Surya, the sun god, frozen mid-journey. Can you believe it, Kabir? We're actually here, Ritu whispered. Their guide, a man with a kind smile named Boo Boo, chuckled. And not just to visit. Today, you are contestants in the Timekeepers of Konark competition. He pointed a finger towards one of the temple's twelve massive wheels. Your challenge, he said, his voice dropping to a dramatic whisper is to stand before that wheel at high noon and prove to the judges how our ancestors told the time. Boo Boo led them closer to the base of a magnificent chakra, its spokes covered in detailed carvings of warriors, dancers, and animals. These 24 wheels are not just decorations, he explained. They are the most sophisticated sundials of the ancient world. He showed them a small hole in the axle of the wheel. A pin, or gnomon, would have stood here, its shadow, cast by the sun, would move across these eight major spokes, each marking a three-hour period, with the minor spokes marking the minutes in between. Kabir was already scribbling in his notebook, but as he looked up, his face fell. A thick blanket of gray cloud was rolling in from the coast, swallowing the blue sky. To make matters worse, a small sign next to the wheel read, Original Nomon Broken. As the competition officially began, a nervous buzz rippled through the teams. Without a clear sun, how could anyone track a shadow? A few students tried to subtly check their digital watches, but the head judge, a sharp-eyed woman in a crisp cotton sari, immediately disqualified them. No modern devices, she announced, her voice carrying across the temple courtyard. The challenge is to use the temple itself. How did our ancestors tell time on a day like this? A wave of worried murmurs spread through the crowd. Ritu's shoulders slumped. Their dream of winning the prestigious competition seemed to be dissolving into the cloudy sky. All their preparation felt useless without the one thing they needed most, the sun. Seeing their disappointment, Boo Boo led them to a quiet corner to sit on a low stone wall. Do not lose heart, he said softly. Let me tell you a legend. He spoke of a time when the temple was nearing completion but the master builders could not figure out how to place the final crowning stone. A 12-year-old boy named Dharmapada, the son of the chief architect, solved the puzzle that had stumped thousands of skilled men. He succeeded, Bubu said, his eyes twinkling, because he understood the stones not just with his hands, but with his heart. He saw how every single carving connected to the sun, the moon, and the great cycle of the seasons. The story settled in Ritu's mind a boy their age who saw things differently. An idea sparked within Ritu. Kabir, come on, she urged, pulling him away from the main group of contestants who were still staring hopelessly at the sky. The legend, Dharmapada didn't just use the obvious tools. He understood the whole system. She led him around the base of the main temple structure to a smaller, less visited wheel, half hidden by overgrown grass. It was more weathered than the others, but the carvings were just as precise. Ignoring the damp stone, she got on her knees and ran her fingers over the spokes, feeling for something more than just the carved figures, a hidden clue the others might have missed. Here, look, Ritu's voice was a triumphant whisper. Kabir knelt beside her. On the lower half of the wheel, just above the main spokes, was a series of very faint, shallowly etched marks that formed a gentle arc. They were easy to miss, looking like simple weathering at first glance. These have to be for the seasons, she said, her mind racing. The sun's path across the sky is higher in summer and lower in winter. A simple shadow wouldn't be accurate all year round. These marks must be corrections for the sun's angle. One for the solstices and this one, she pointed to the middle mark, for the equinox, which is right about now. Kabir's eyes lit up behind his glasses. You're right. It's a multivariable calculator made of stone. The gnomon is just one part of the clock. The entire wheel is the machine. Their excitement was palpable, but two problems remained. 
They had no nomen and, more importantly, no sun. Just as despair began to creep back in, the universe seemed to offer a hint. A small break appeared in the thick clouds, and for a fleeting moment, a weak, watery sunbeam cut through the gloom, illuminating the face of the stone wheel. It wasn't strong enough to cast a proper shadow, but it was enough to give them a daring idea. They raced back to the judges, just as their team was being called. We have a solution. Ritu announced. Ignoring the doubtful looks, Kabir took a straight stick from his bag and held it firmly in the wheel's central hole, pointing it straight out. Ritu quickly unfastened a colorful thread from her bracelet and tied one end to the stick. As another brief, weak sunbeam broke through, she stretched the thread taut, aligning its path with the faint seasonal mark for the equinox that she had discovered. The thread, now acting as a guide, cast a very faint, thin shadow across one of the major spokes. It's almost noon, Ritu declared confidently. The shadow is just approaching the main top spoke. The judges and the other teams crowded around, their expressions a mixture of skepticism and curiosity. But as Ritu and Kabir explained the elegant geometry they had uncovered, how the main spokes marked the hours, but the hidden arcs corrected for the sun's seasonal journey, a hush fell over the crowd. They explained that their method wasn't about pinpointing the exact minute on a cloudy day. It was about demonstrating the profound knowledge of the temple's builders, who had created a clock that worked in harmony with the cosmos. They were revealing the temple's deepest secret. It wasn't just a time-telling device, but a map of the dance between stone, sun, and seasons. In the end, they won. The head judge announced that while other teams had given up, Ritu and Kabir had shown true scholarly spirit and a deep respect for the temple's creators. Their victory wasn't just the gleaming trophy they were awarded, but the incredible feeling of having solved a 700-year-old puzzle. As they left the temple grounds, they looked back at the magnificent sunwheel. It was no longer just a beautiful, ancient carving. It was a timeless clock, a story in stone, and a secret they now shared with the brilliant boy builder from the legends.